Welcome back to America's Forum. I'm J.D. Hayward. And I'm John Bachman. J.D., can't wait to get to that interview you have coming up with Michael Hayden in just a second. But first, let's update people on the situation in the Ukraine. Russia keeps pushing the limits of the military drilling in Crimea along the border of the Ukraine as well, ahead of a crucial vote on secession this weekend. Also just coming in now after a meeting with John Kerry today, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says there is no common vision between the opposing sides, but he reaffirmed that Russia would not invade southeastern Ukraine. Still, the tense situation led German Chancellor Angela, uh, Angela Merkel to declare that Putin is risking a catastrophe if he keeps up his antics. Also, Mark Zuckerberg takes on President Obama on Facebook. Zuckerberg wrote on his Facebook page that the president's response to the NSA scandal has frustrated him, and he says the U.S. government should be a champion of the Internet not a threat, his words. Zuckerberg and Obama had been allies up until recently. Now we'll send it over to J.D. And uh, John, you mentioned it earlier, I had the chance to visit with the former head of the CIA and the National Security Agency, General Michael Hayden. Very interesting to get his insights on the Malaysian jetliner and more transpiring in the news. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. Joining us now with his take on some of the major stories of the day, former National Security Agency Director General Mike Hayden. General Hayden, it's good to have you with us and uh, premature birthday wishes. I understand you're a St. <laughs> Patrick's Day birthday guy. Uh, in, 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 indeed I am. And they, you know, they gave me a parade every year back home. It was super. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's the luck of the Irish, but it's the, um, the analysis of uh, an intelligence professional general we're interested in today, especially when it comes to this Malaysian jetliner. As someone who has spent his career assessing intelligence, is there a personal checklist you can share with us as you're dealing with, with the unknowns of this big a story? Yeah, there are three, three or four things come, come to mind, uh, Congressman. And, and the first is, you know, Running a new theory of the day every morning based upon the overnight take is probably not the most productive way to address this problem. You recall, what, 48 hours ago we, we had the Chinese spotted wreckage and therefore it went down east of Malaysia. And the story today now, it's west of Malaysia. I, I understand the news cycle, but the analytic cycle is different. I mean, right now all we have are data points, and then we've got some hypotheses. And what you do is you kind of line up your hypotheses, and then you take your data points and find out how many of the data points are consistent with each of the hypotheses. And you, you just patiently, painstakingly work your way through the different options until you come up with an hypothesis that is more rather than less likely. And, and I've I got to tell you, Congressman, um, John, John McLaughlin used to be the deputy director at the agency, and John had a wonderful phrase. He said, you know, some things in life are secrets, other things are mysteries. I mean, a, a secret is something that you can steal. A secret is something that is knowable, and that's kind of the work of intelligence. You know, this, may, this one may end up just being a mystery. It's, it, this, we, we may actually have to face the reality that we're never going to get the certitude about this. Well, a very different type of airplane where apparently intelligence was stolen. General, I refer to the, uh, the new Chinese stealth fighter. The level of spying that the People's Republic of China does on our domestic defense contractors uh, in the case of the stealth jet fighter and really across the width and breadth of our nation, how significant is Chinese spying? Oh, it's, it, is, it is on a massive scale. now. I don't think we would call it incredibly sophisticated. I mean, it's not bad. I'm not saying it's primitive. But its great strength is not its elegance. Its great strength is its mass. And I'm very fond of saying that as a professional, a professional intelligence officer, I just stand back in awe at the breadth, depth, sophistication, and persistence of the Chinese espionage effort against the United States of America. It is truly a thing to behold. Now, Congressman, you know, when they're going after non-defense firms and trying to steal the designs of this particular bus or that particular pleasure craft or something, that's an unfair fight. That's, that's the Chinese state, a powerful nation state, going after small to mid-sized American industries. China going after American defense secrets is, frankly, an accepted international practice. And so 
if the Chinese are successful in doing that, it's far less shame on them and more shame on us. Uh, and in terms of keeping our own house in order, order, General Hayden, you've worn both hats, both as NSA director and as CIA director. Uh, you spoke to Newsmax.com the other day about the continuing controversy, the allegations made by uh, Senate Intelligence Chair Dianne Feinstein against the CIA. What is your take on that situation, sir? Yeah, this is in an incredibly bad place, Congressman, and, and you know it as well as I. Look, the Constitution sets up the different branches of government to be in, 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 in constant torque, one with the other. I mean, the stress is built into the system. That's natural. But what's happened in the last week has just gone gone beyond the pale. And it's gotten far too emotional, far too intemperate. It hurts oversight. It hurts the smooth functioning of the CIA. And, and it hurts America. I think everyone needs to step back a little bit here, take a breath, maybe take the weekend off, and then come back at this on Monday and, and just go through the, the charges and counter charges. Look, you got the Senate saying you spied on me. You've got CIA saying you guys got documents we didn't give you. And okay, well let's let's work our way through this. I, I got Congressman in the backdrop. This is this might actually be less about CIA checking computer logs and how much they told the Congress about that, and more about the the, the heart of the issue, which is the report on the interrogation program. Described as a CISA report, the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, but in truth, it's the report of the Democratic staff and the contractors they hired. So let's do the shortcut the here, Jen. Are, are you saying it's a function of politics more than oversight? It's a, it's, it's a, it is a function of oversight. But, but the, look, the, the agency isn't pushing back because the interrogation program should be secret from Congress or too sensitive for Congress or if Congress knew about it, it would be embarrassing. The, the, the heart of the issue for the agency is that this report that has been drawn up in the view of the agency is just wrong. And, and, and the agency doesn't quite know what to do about that since Senator Feinstein wants to make this report public and the agency's great fear this will by default uh, become the accepted definitive historical record. And the agency just thinks the report has great and serious errors in it. General Michael Hayden, we thank you.